Okay, so in this video, I'm going to take you through the life cycle of a ticket from the developer's perspective. So these are the, this is the process that you need to ask your developers to follow. And um, we're going to go over things like branch management, and I will take you through the actual Git commands that your developer can use to do that. Um, and it will help immensely with organization and efficiency. So first of all, um, so let's say I'm the developer on this ticket, which I am. Um, so I would uh, see a ticket in my to-do list and uh, read it over and assign it to in progress if I'm ready to work on it. And in progress can even mean um, that I'm researching the problem. And it's important to put things in progress even you know, when you're in the beginning phases of thinking about and researching something so that it doesn't get assigned to maybe somebody else and then that work gets duplicated. Um, so now that I've put it in progress, it will let me know, hey, the board's been updated. And now here it is. Okay, so I have um, gone into uh, my local version of the code repo, the um, front end, which is gonna be what has to change for this ticket. Um, and so we are um, working off of a branch called phase one. Really the branch should be named testing uh, because that, that's what it is. Um, this is the branch that's deployed in our testing environment. Um, so all, the um, individual ticket branches need to branch off of that testing branch, which here is, is named phase one, so please excuse that. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I checked out the phase one branch and I'm gonna do a git pull in case there have been um, changes on that branch, maybe another developer fixed a different ticket and I need to grab their changes. Um, so we'll uh, see, and it looks like uh, there were changes. So now I'm up to date, um, so I won't have to merge whatever changes I make with those changes. Um, so now I will um, create a new branch. So that's um, a git checkout, and I'm gonna give it this um, option B. And what that means is that um, if the branch doesn't already exist, create it. And since this is a new branch, I, I know it's not going to exist yet. And I'm going to name it exactly what that ticket is named. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because this way, once I start pushing uh, changes to the repo, um, that if you look on that ticket, it'll show what I'm doing. And this way the project manager can look at tickets and see, okay, there is progress being made here. And so this is so important um, so that people are apprised of, of your work um, and from a project management perspective that you can get a sense um, that, that work is being done. And um, we'll get into that a little bit later. So, here I have created this new branch. And since I already checked out phase one, basically this is making a child branch off of the phase one branch. And so now I'm gonna go ahead and change the files that I need to do to make this fix. And um, once I'm done with that, we will resume so that I can show you the commands to commit those changes and push them to the repo. Okay, so now that I've made the uh, changes necessary to, to fix the bug that was written up in the ticket. Okay, so now that I've made the code changes for that ticket, I can see what I've done by doing git status. Um, and there's a couple files here that I don't uh, wanna add to the repo and a couple that I do. Um, so, in this case, it's easiest just to go into the directory and add them. Um, 
if I did want to go ahead and add them all to the repo, um, what I would do next is um, the git commit has an option. If you do an, an A, um, it will take all your unstaged um, files and add them to the commit. But in this case, we don't want to do that. Uh, what I do want to do, though, is um, use the M option to be able to put a um, verbal indication of what happened in this commit. Um, so we started out with the ticket name. Um, and this is because uh, if maybe you didn't name your uh, branch correctly, you can still get JIRA to recognize that a given commit is associated with a given ticket uh, by putting the ticket in your uh, commit message. So, um, and, it, and it just makes things easier to, to know what's going on in Bitbucket if you do that. Um, so here I'll, I'll just make a brief description. Um, so, And show, so I'm going into some depth to, you know, because like I say, I'll, I'll show you, um, I'll, I'll show you in Bitbucket why this makes things easier, but I'm going into, you know, a bit of description. So once that commit is made, uh, I want to go ahead and push. Uh, now, let's say I wasn't done with this ticket, um, but I had to leave for the day. I would still do this. Um, so some developers don't, you know, push anything up to the repo until they're done with the ticket. Um, that's unwise. Uh, if there, anything happened, you know, locally, you would lose your work. So really, you should push everything up to the repo, whether it's done or not, every day. Um, it's really not finalized until you do a pull request. So um, also this way, other people can know what you've been working on. So here I'll do a git push. And what it's gonna do is it go, it's going to have me um, set the remote branch. And I'll show you what they mean by that in a moment. And I'm gonna set it to the same name as this local branch. Okay, so now that that's been pushed up, what I can do is um, here in Bitbucket, I can see a list of all the recent commits and here it is. And so this is why it's nice to have a good description um, so that you know people can see what recently has been happening. Um, and here it created um, this remote branch uh, corresponding to my local branch. And you can also go to branches. And here you can you can see it. And um, importantly, you can change its destination. So since I'm done with this ticket, I want to go ahead and submit a pull request. And I'll show you what that means in a second. Uh, but a pull request is basically a request to merge code changes from a given branch um, to the testing branch. Um, so I'm going to not um, try to put this into the master branch because this would be like, basically, since our live environment is using the master branch, it would be like asking to push it live before it's even gone onto the testing environment. Um, so I'm going to change this to the branch that is um, being used on the test environment. We really should name this branch testing so that that's more clear, but it's, it's named phase one right now. But just know that this is the branch that's deployed on, on testing. And so I'm going to create a pull request. And so we see these fields are already filled in. So we're asking, hey, take these changes that are on this branch and put them in the testing branch. And I will select um, a, a senior level reviewer 
uh, to review the code. And this is very important that somebody else lays eyes on what you've done uh, before uh, it, it goes on the staging environment. And let's close out the branch after it's merged. So here we've got a uh, pull request and it nicely lays out um, every, like the exact lines and files that I changed. Um, and if I go into JIRA and I reopen this ticket, I can see now all that there, you know, and these are links to it. So somebody coming in, um, to the ticket can see exactly what code changes are associated with this, uh, this ticket. And I want to change the status to under review um, so that somebody can come in and see where it's at that, hey, it's, it's waiting for the other reviewer to look at it. Um, now, I'm just going to pretend that I am the other reviewer. Um, so that I can show you from their perspective what they do um, and how they change the ticket status once they're done. So if we go back into Bitbucket and do something we should never do in real life, which is um, not have a reviewer on a ticket, we can update it. And so now it's going to make it so I can um, merge this, I can approve and merge this pull request myself. Um, and so this is just for demonstration purposes. Pretend I am the guy that I said was going to review the, the uh, code. So when I hit merge, what's going to happen is it's going to merge this ticket into phase one, which is what's deployed on testing. Uh, and it's going to close up the branch. Okay, and so again, pretending that I am the re reviewing developer, once I've done that, I move this ticket to ready for testing. But first, I'm actually gonna have to deploy it to testing because right now we don't have a tool like Jenkins set up to automatically. Um, so what Jenkins could do that was is really neat is once a new ticket has been merged into your testing branch, it can automatically um, create a build and deploy it to your test environment. But since we don't have that set up right now on this project, um, I'm gonna show you how to do it manually. And um, then we can move it to ready for testing, which signals the tester that she can go ahead and see this change on test environment and um, verify that it's fixed the way she felt like it should be. Okay, so here I am um, SSH into our test environment, which as I indicated previously is set to um, this phase one branch. And that's the branch that we just did the pull request to merge that new ticket into. So what I do here, um, and again, pretending that I'm the reviewer that, uh, I'm the developer that reviewed this ticket, I'm going to do a git pull and it's going to pull that um, tickets changes here. And since this is an Angular project, I'm going to go ahead and do the, um, the build. And once it's done, um, this ticket can then be moved um, from the under review column to ready for testing. And then once the tester's happy with it, she can move it to done.